to the Teacher Made channel. Today, we are going to talk about the misconceptions of special education for parents and teachers. If anybody doesn't know, I am a special education resource teacher and I work with children's kindergarten through fifth grade. So let's get started. And don't mind me, I'm just build, be building with my little blocks or cubes, whatever you call them. Some people call them uniface cubes. Some people call them connector blocks. I just say connector blocks. Okay, so the first topic we're going to talk about is EC is not a quick fix. I'm sorry, but EC is not a quick fix. I don't know why parents think that once they sign the consent form that they think automatically that their child will just start receiving services. Well, I'm here to tell you that is a lie. Your child will not start receiving services after you get the consent form. After you get the consent form, that's when we do all the testing um, from the school psychologist, um, the OT may be involved or the physical therapist. So I don't want parents to think that as soon as they sign the consent form, which I had some parents, I had to hunt down, like actually go to their jobs to get the form, just to get it signed. Because some parents, they are in denial which I understand, but I stopped doing it after my third year of teaching special ed, and I'm not hunting down any more parents. So the whole con EC is a quick fix once we throw them inside the program, that is a lie. After you get the consent form, like I said, that's when we do all the testing, and that's when everybody comes together to test your child to see if they qualify for one of the 13 disabilities in whatever state that you are in the second misconception is for actually teachers brand new teachers um your caseload will never be under 16 kids i don't know why other people think that once you start especially for resource because i teach resource i don't know why people think that once you start teaching special ed that your caseload is going to be like 10 perfect kids. That's a lie. Your caseload will be anywhere from like 30 to um 20 kids. I remember I had when I first started teaching resource, um, I had about, they told me 10, but I knew that was a fib. They told me 10 and then my caseload went all the way up to 35. And then it just kept growing because because our school was just a big school and then more kids were being added they'll just be thrown into the program which is another topic we can talk about but not today about kids being thrown in special ed when really they're not supposed to be in there and so like i said your caseload will never be less than 12 kids i don't know why when people start to look for jobs they automatically think the caseload going to be small no because when i was teaching self-contained the behavior classroom, I definitely had 15 kids in there. Now, try imagine being in a room with 15 kids and they all have behavior problems. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the next misconception that we're going to talk about is always look out for yourself. And what I mean by that is that if something was to happen, it's your word against the other kid or it's your word against the other teacher and teacher and we're going to talk and i'm going to talk about in the next topic about what i mean because it's going to piggyback off what i just said so always 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 put yourself first at a school because at the end of the day is your word against theirs i done had kids lie on me and said that that they were failing um parents lied on me somebody in the school always gonna lie on you just just expect it um be ready my first year of teaching i was just so happy to be there <laughs> no be ready because somebody always gonna lie on you which leads me to the next topic which is document everything you need to write down everything and when i mean everything i mean everything my mom used to be a social worker 
and she's actually the one who taught me how to document things and you know as a special ed teacher we document things anyway but make sure you document everything as a special education teacher because like i said back in the other topic previous topic people will lie on you they're gonna lie on you they're gonna throw you under the bus so make sure you document everything, write it down. Look, I done got, I have folders upon folders for every school that I have worked at. I wrote down, I even wrote down what the people was wearing. I wrote down what you wore. I could tell you what you had wore that day, how your hairstyle was, because you are not going to get over on me and throw me under the bus because you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing at school. So, document everything. Write down the time, the date. Like I said, if the teacher wasn't there, you can write that down too. Um, put down when you weren't there. Maybe you were out sick. I don't know. People tried to, I remember one time I was at a school and they tried to get me to sign some form in the behavior self-contained classroom because the kid got into a fight and they wanted me to sign it. I'm not, I'm not signing that thing. For one, I was not there. Secondly, why would I sign something and I never even seen what happened? And see, that's why I said like later on they would have said, oh, well, she was there at hand. No, don't, don't put your name on that paper because somebody always going to get you in there and they going to try to get you. And y'all know, um, Special ed records are good for seven years. So, well, in the U.S., I don't know where y'all at. I'm in the U.S., so um, special ed records are good for at least seven years. So, like I said, make sure you document, have your side of the story, because parents and teachers will lie on you. The next topic we are going to talk about is co-teaching doesn't work unless you're working with a good teacher. And what I mean by that is that you and the other co-teacher need to be on board with one another because if you have two co-teachers working together and your personalities are not a good match, then it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because you tell the kid to do one thing and then they over here doing another and then when the principal come in you look y'all both looking crazy because it's it's one teacher said one thing and another said another thing and then all that fighting in front of the kids the students that's not good um please don't do that don't fight in front of the kids because that's how behaviors get started and they are learned because you don't want to be a good role model for the kids. And then they're going to say, well, my teacher does it with Mrs. James. So don't do that. Um, like I said, co-teaching is not going to work, work properly unless you are paired with another good teacher. The next topic we're going to talk about is be flexible with your students. Be very flexible with your kids. This way, that way, this way. Oh, sorry, y'all. Be flexible with your kids because... Just be flexible. Um, especially if you're resourced or working in a self-contained classroom. Be flexible with them. Um, when I was teaching self the self-contained classroom, I had all boys. I miss those all boys. It was an all boys classroom. I may have had like one or two girls in there, but they were being pushed in with another classroom. Be flexible because they they not gonna be able to follow what the regular ed kids doing in another classroom. And even when they were being pushed out into the other classrooms, I made sure I stick to the schedule as all the other classrooms. So by the time they were being pushed in inside the other classroom, there was like no big surprise or anything because you know how they are about their schedules. So just be flexible. Um, work with the other teacher. Try to pair them with a teacher that matches their personality and you know the environment of the classroom. Um, so that they can be successful in the classroom. So just being very flexible. 
the next topic we're going to talk about is advocate for your student you are going to get parents who are going to be in denial they're going to be in denial they're going to say oh no my child doesn't have autism they don't have adhd you know darn well your child has some type of disability if they are jumping off the table cussing hitting teachers and their peers and just doing stuff that they don't need to be doing. You are gonna have those kids, but you need to advocate for them because some of these students, they don't have a voice. Um, I love to advocate for my kids because at the end of the day, we're doing what's best for the child. What's best for the child and not for, not for what's good for me or for the teacher, their regular ed teacher. We're doing what's best for them. Or even the parent, too, because sometimes the parent may think, oh, they need this and that, or they need OT or this and that. And that's not true because every child is different. See how this square is different from this L-shape figure? All the kids are different. So there's no one size fits all. Yes, that is the child, the parent's child, but at the end of the day, you are a specialist in your field and you also know what you are doing too. So make sure you are advocating for your students because sometimes even a regular ed teacher, they don't like them in there and they don't want to advocate for them either. <sighs> the next thing we're going to talk about is get organized. Get organized as a teacher. Just like with these blocks um, or connecting blocks, cubes, whatever you want to call them. I have them all around in my classroom. Um, get organized as a teacher, especially if you're a first year teacher. Um, make sure that you have files for all of your kids. Make sure that you have a lot of paper because you're going to be printing off a lot of stuff. Make sure that you have an area where there's like a cool down area, area where the student can cool down so they can, you know, anytime they have a behavior problem, they can cool down in that area. I know I had a tent in my room when I was teaching that behavior self-contained classroom and those boys, oh my gosh, they loved it. They loved being in that tent and they knew what it was for. And see, that's another thing. You got to teach them what it was for so I had a tent in my classroom and they knew they could cool down in there I even had cool down signs and techniques I also had a sensory area where they can play with some of these or play-doh or silly putty or anything just for them to cool down so you have got to be organized because when somebody come and ask you for a paper that was back in maybe October of last year you better produce that paper you better have it ready or you better have your documentation actually because like I said that goes back to that other point what I just said they will throw you under the bus make sure you have all your stuff labeled the next thing we're gonna talk about is other teachers mm. other teachers think I do nothing but walk around the school building first of all why would you think that because we do more than just walk around the school building. I'm pretty sure you had a teacher who said, oh, especially that teacher, they don't do nothing but walk around the school building. First of all, you know who chose general education. I like special education because I get to work with children of various disabilities. And they're, they just put a smile on my face. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is some teachers think you do absolutely nothing but do paperwork pull them out for 30 minutes. I literally had one teacher said, oh, I wish I could just walk around the school all day. Really, lady? So you ain't see me chasing that kid out the front of the school building and then you just let them go past you because you didn't want to stop them? You didn't think that was a safety concern? No. Make sure that you are seen around the school doing your work. Um, pushing those kids to move forward. I know we use iReady in my school, which is very good for, you know, kids because it's like a progression built on educational website and it moves along with their progression. They love the math on there. It also has games. And if you also look at the other links, and I'll post the link up there, 
if you look at other links, you will also see in my video of me doing educational reviews of other websites that I have used in my school. But like I said, some teachers, and you will have some teachers who, like I said, they think you do absolutely nothing. The next one we're going to talk about, and sorry if you see me looking down, I wrote all the points down on my piece of paper because that's just a part of me being organized as a special ed teacher. And the last one is expect a bunch of meetings. You're going to have to have a meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. All these freaking meetings. But that's kind of like what you signed up for when you put your name on a dotted line to become a special ed teacher. Because anybody who knows what special ed teachers do, do is nothing but documentation, data, which I love because you are tracking their progress to see how they do from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year. And just, just enjoy the process of documenting everything and just also make sure you write down everything, what happened in the meeting, and also make sure you take good notes. But expect to have meeting after meeting. Just because you had an annual, annual review doesn't mean that you won't have another meeting later on. A parent can call for a meeting at any time. So just make sure that you have your stuff together your documentation ready to go so when a parent does call for a meeting, you won't be scrambling around trying to find where all that paperwork went because you will be looking like you don't know what you're doing. And the parent be like, well, why are they my child's teacher and they don't know what they're doing? So just make sure you always you are always ready because they can call for a meeting at any time. Even you call for a meeting for yourself. So those are my 10 misconceptions in special education for teachers and parents. And all I did was build an H, I love these blocks.